Isn't this a beautiful pen? I'm not sure what kind of wood it is, but uh, it was presented to me and the officers of my of my lodge that year, and that year was back in 2010, and uh, that's my lodge. I'm a proud member of uh, Long Beach Lodge, number 327. Uh, free and accepted Masons in Long Beach, California. That is the lodge that absorbed my dad's old lodge, which was Signal Lodge at the time in Long Beach. And of course, I'm a proud, proud Mason. Uh, but I'm also a member of uh, and, uh, and an officer of and very involved uh, in uh, the Ordo Templiori Entis, uh, which is an initiatory uh, uh, society that is, uh, it's not Masonic. It was back in the 1800s, uh, but it is no longer a Masonic organization. But it still uses the, the same uh, uh, basic formula of most fraternal organizations, uh, especially with uh, with at least a pretense of, of having mystical origins. And uh, I, I hope this video is working. Yesterday it wasn't working so well and I had to tweak things. And so I hope you're, I hope you're watching this uh, at the moment because I'm going to continue on where I left off uh, yesterday. And I'm speaking about uh, uh, I, uh, uh, well, I'm sharing a paper that I presented at a gathering, a yearly gathering at the time, of um, esoteric uh, Freemasons uh, who met every year uh, to present uh, papers and uh, to gather uh, together for the, the preservation uh, and the edification and preservation of um, aspects of esoteric Freemasonry. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the paper. I believe this is the first one that I presented uh, for that particular uh, uh, group of brothers. And what I say uh, in the in the paper, of course, is. Uh, uh, directly significant, uh, at least in my mind, to, uh, to Freemasonry. But more generally, everything I say about this uh, in this particular paper and the formula of, of initiation, uh, I've written only because I am so, uh, I've been so informed uh, because of my experience uh, in as an initiator in the Ordo Templi Orientis and, uh, and other magical uh, organizations. So this is part two. And the, and the official title of the talk was, let me, let me be accurate here, Ritual Work, Memory Work, and the Fear of Death in Public Speaking. Part two, want to be a member? Now, I don't know if you've ever, I'm digressing here. I don't know if you've ever uh, literally it's a it's a Betty Boop cartoon. Betty Boop, uh, very, very early uh, cartoon of the, the 20s. Um, and uh, by the same uh, organization that gave us Popeye, eventually gave us Popeye, the Flesher Brothers, I believe. Uh, but this one, th there was another cartoon character called Bimbo. And Bimbo was sort of, we, we don't know what kind of an animal, whether it's a mouse or a, who, who knows. But there was a cartoon called Bimbo's Initiation. Okay. 
And these cartoonists, these early cartoonists, must have been blowing weed or it is such a hip cartoon. And Bimbo is uh, 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 recruited into a, a fraternal organization, a mystical thing. And uh, they try to get him to join, and they, they repeatedly say, want to be a member, want to be a member. And he goes, no. <laughs> and then he goes through all sorts of wild ordeals that if you've never joined a mystical fraternal organization, you, you recognize at least elements of his, of his ordeals. And at the, very, at the very end, all of these... Uh, characters take off their their robes and stuff and you find out that the initiators the head initiator is Betty Boop herself sexy little Betty Boop and uh, all of the other members are are other uh, miniature models of Betty Boop. it's it's so psychedelic okay so Keeping that in mind, that's how I started off this second section. Um, Want to be a member? Initiate. As a noun, it means beginner. As a verb, it means to begin, to bring into practice or use, also to instruct. As an adjective, it means started. Initiation is a commencement. Not a reward for achievement, not a seal of attainment, not a trophy of adeptship. Initiation is a beginning. And when we evoke a beginning, we also by necessity conjure an ending. Death is the event, inevitable penalty we pay for allowing ourselves to be born. And the honor of life's journey between these two great pylons is the only compensation offered for this fate. The uninitiated invoke neither birth, nor life, nor death. Like sleepwalkers, our numbed steps bear us comatose from cradle to grave. Our pale shadow lives pantomime, but never experience the adventures of the initiate's journey. Like other mammals, we are born and live and die. But unless we make a conscious effort to wake up, unless we harness and focus the powers of our wills to take the first steps of spiritual renewal, we will not, as Homer sang in his hymn to Demeter, we will not receive our share of the right. We will not have the same lot as the initiate once we are dead and dwell in the mold where the sun goes down. Prostitution may be the oldest profession in the world, but the oldest spiritual institution is most certainly the initiatory society. To those who would argue that religion holds this august position, I must respectfully disagree. Religion merely haunts the outer courts of the great initiatory temple and holds mystery at arm's length. From the occasional thread of truth carried by the wind from the initiatory chamber, religion psychotically weaves and reweaves doctrines and dogma, tapestries of hope, hate, and perpetual distraction. Religion exalts mystery as an unknowable secret that must be sealed in glass like the corpse of an enchanted princess and fearfully worshipped from afar. Initiation, on the other hand, requires direct participation and demands each of us to smash the casket and press mad lips to mystery, wooing her as a lover who will offer up her treasures in a succession of sweet surrenders. This she will do, 
but only in exact ratio to our evolving, evolving ability to, and worthiness to receive them. The formula of initiation is universal, and masonry certainly hasn't cornered the market. It matters little what specific mystery is revealed in the graduated steps of any particular initiatory society. Properly experienced, a degree of illumination can potentially be achieved in even the most innocuous rites. Scholars, soldiers, sailors, physicians, printers, blacksmith, even thieves and hangmen have historically enjoyed the benefits and privileges of fraternal orders. Remnants of the rites of our prehistoric brethren can still be seen in tribal ceremonies of indigenous people all over the planet. Initiations, circumcisions, ordeals of the hunt, sexual mysteries, secret words and signs, elaborate temple openings and closings, reenactments of heroic themes, oaths, covenants, ritual deaths and resurrection, enough naked claptrap to make even the most conservative Freemason blush with embarrassment as he readily identifies the key elements of his craft. What is pri of primary importance is that the master key to the initiatory method itself becomes a permanently installed fixture in the individual. Once we've learned the process of becoming something greater than we are, we can and eventually will apply that same alchemy to ourselves to achieve the supreme in attainment. But what about the Egyptian initiatories, uh, the initiation ceremonies? Do we know with any degree of accuracy what they were like? Is masonry truly the inheritor of the Egyptian mysteries? I think the only on honest answer is nobody really knows. There are those who have claimed to have combed the astral records to eavesdrop on the moment when Plato, Pythagoras, Homer, or, or Jesus were raised to spiritual perfection within the Great Pyramid. Great modern occultists, including Eliphas Levi, Aleister Crowley, and Manley Hall, have thrilled us with imaginative and colorful tales of the ancient initiate's journey. But no archaeologist has yet unearthed a first edition of Duncan's complete and unabridged Egyptian initiatory, initiatory's manual and monitor, explained and interpreted by copious notes and numerous engravings. Or have they? Part three, the Egyptian book of lucid dreaming, question mark, in parentheses, memories are made of this. Stuck between the legs of every well-dressed Egyptian mummy is a magical text written, so tradition would have us believe, by the god Thoth himself. Memorized to perfection in life, it enabled the recently deceased to negotiate step by step the ordeals and confusion of post-mortem existence and become absorbed, as it were, fully identified with the immortal deity. The text is known to us as the Book of the Dead. And while unquestionably the scriptural centerpiece of an elaborately complex religious institution, it is, in my opinion, the fundamental handbook of initiation. 
And that is where we're going to end this talk today because there's enough left uh, over that I don't want to rush it. And uh, as I'm unsure that this is even being broadcast or, or being viewed or being able to uh, uh, be commented upon, I will close for today and hopefully uh, uh, confirm that everything was okay. And if not, I'll do what I did yesterday to try to make it right for you. Anyway, until tomorrow. Continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.